Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to ask a question that has come up a lot recently, and it's actually been one of the most frequent questions I get asked over the last few years, and that is, why do I use Photoshop to illustrate? And that's maybe in relation to other available programs like Adobe Illustrator, and these days Procreate. So I'm going to assume that a lot of people wonder why I use Photoshop mostly in relation to Illustrator. And that's because I do use a lot of vector graphics in my illustration. That means I'm making shapes using the pen tool and that's like using kind of lines, paths that you can click on with your mouse or with your stylus and then you can change them and edit them dynamically versus working more purely in a sort of more painterly style using only digital brushes or of course using Photoshop in a way that it originally was intended which was for man manipulating photographs, images. So that that's all in comparison to Illustrator which is a native vector program meaning that you can create shapes using the pen tool, using shape tool, that means circles, squares, triangles, and other abstract shapes and curves. And you can do all that very easily in Illustrator. What Illustrator lacks that Photoshop has in addition to the ability to, to create vector shapes is the ability to edit raster images. And the raster images is basically pixel-based images and Photoshop is all that. Whether you're working in photographs, whether you're working um, using digital brushes, all that is created not by vector but by raster and, and, and it's making every, it's using pixels and not sort of math equations to create the shapes. I think a lot of illustrators understand that difference today between vector and raster and I think the confusion exists really when asking why I would choose Photoshop over Illustrator is because Photoshop actually has vector in it, but then it also has that raster. So it may sound like I'm kind of beating this thing to death, but I just want to emphasize that what Photoshop lacks as a vector graphics program, because of course, if you were creating, say a logo or a font, there are a lot of illustrations that require vector only. And a lot of that is more that clear, clean, precise, geometric, no textures kind of illustration. So all those things, but especially things like logos, I would never create that in Photoshop because um, it's just too much program for what you're trying to do. Illustrator is a much better program for that. It is the most suitable program for things like logos. And the files you create are in like much smaller. You're talking like two, three, four megabytes, maybe 10 meg megabytes versus a Photoshop file, which can be in the gigabytes. Yeah, Photoshop is is not elegant at creating vector shapes and stuff like that, but it's very elegant in manipulating textures and allowing me to use digital brushes. And for instance, a lot of the time when I'm illustrating, in addition to using digital brushes, I also create textures using ink on paper and I scan it in and I sample it. Where do I do all that? I do that in Photoshop. And that's right where I'm already creating my illustration. And then I can actually bring that into my illustration and keep editing it. I can do things like blurring and smudging and adjusting levels and, and colors and all that. And it all happens right there in Photoshop. I never have to leave. And in that sense, Photoshop is a much more elegant program or app for the kind of illustration I do. If you're at all interested in the kind of illustration that I make, you can go to my website, tomfroze.com. And you can actually peek under the hood, peel back the curtain and see how I illustrate in my Skillshare classes on Skillshare.com. Just look me up or you can go to TomFroze.com slash teaching. And that's where I present all the Skillshare classes that I've made. My most recent class is Sweet Spots, where I teach how to create small editorial style illustrations, kind of sets of illustrations. And really what I focus on is creating a consistent style and thinking about ideas. It's not so much about Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that, but you can actually actually watch me working 
in Photoshop while I'm demonstra demonstrating how to do the project. And uh, that's just a, a most recent example of kind of peeking behind uh, the curtain, so to speak, and seeing exactly how I use Photoshop in that way. So another question I do get asked a lot that's related, and this I think is coming a lot more frequently because of my recent class, how are you using your iPad to manipulate things that are in Photoshop on your Mac? So if you're looking at my class, you'll see that I'm often using just my Apple Pencil and my iPad, but I'm actually using Photoshop on my Mac. It's working just like a Wacom tablet, a Wacom graphics tablet, where you can see what you're working on down here, as well as up on your screen. The, the app is called AstroPad. I've been using this for probably three or four years now. I first heard about it on advertisement. They were a sponsor on a podcast called the Creative Pep Talk Podcast. That's where I found out about AstroPad and it, it is a game changer. Today, you can actually, if you have the most up-to-date Mac and iPad, you can actually use the Mac OS native, the built-in program called Sidecar. And Sidecar really just allows you to use your iPad as a tablet for your Mac. But because I'm a little bit behind in the technology, I can use AstroPad to do the same. I have an iPad 13 inch. It's just the generation before they came up with the, the new iPad and the new pencil. I don't know exactly what generation to call it. And then I have a, a roughly a 2015 era MacBook Pro and that, that's what I'm using for illustration. So I hope that answers your question in terms of why I use Photoshop for illustrating the way I do and not Illustrator and also gives you some insight into how I use my iPad as a tablet for Photoshop. Um, hope that answers your questions. I hope you guys have a great week or weekend or whatever time of the week it is that you're watching this. I never know when you guys pick these things up, but anyway, it's the weekend for me and I'm enjoying, I'm looking forward to enjoying it, not working a whole lot. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Just a reminder guys, if you like this video, please let me know. A little thumbs up is a great way to let me know you are enjoying this video. And a subscription is the best way to let me know you guys are liking the content that I'm putting here and an encouragement to me to keep doing this. We have reached 2,000 subscribers over the last couple of years. And for me, that's, that's big. That's a big deal. It's 2,000 people. If you were to fill a room with 2,000 people, that would look like a lot. And I don't take that lightly. So hello everyone, thank you very much for subscribing. Um, if you're new here, you're very welcome. Please uh, subscribe and uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this video.